Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm here. I'm here. I just can't seem to get that, get it just right with the with the timing on this stuff, man. And I'm big on being on time, but I can't say I'm on time just because the computer is up and running and I'm press the start button, whatever. Take a couple minutes to get it going. Without any further delay, without any, let's get right into it, shall we? <clears throat> Father God in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that even though we may be late, Lord God, you're always on time, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Um, even though... We may do things a certain way, Lord God. You know uh, what's in our hearts, what is good or bad. What are we doing things for show? You know what's in our heart. What are we doing things out of sincerity? You know what's in our heart. Whether we have good intentions or bad intentions, you know what's in our hearts, Lord God. And God, I pray you would reveal the things that are in our hearts to us. Reveal what's in my heart to me, Lord God. Reveal what's in their hearts to them, Lord God. And help us to, to change our ways for you, Lord. And the only way we can change our ways is to just come to you, first of all, with everything. And make a, a, a conscious decision, Lord God. To make an intentional decision to live for you, to glorify you, to honor you to seek you, to love you, to obey your commands, Lord God. This we need from you, Lord. 
We cannot do it ourselves. We need your power, your Holy Spirit. So God, I'm praying for your Holy Ghost this morning to fill each and every one of us that we may do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 and amen. All right, that feels good there, knowing that God's got it. See, see, when we try to do things ourselves, you know what I'm saying? It, it seems hard, but when 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 we know that God's is, is God's got in His hand, He's the one that's making it happen. <clears throat> things seem a little uh, a little less frustrating. They don't mean they don't mean they don't they don't mean that things are gonna get easy. You know what I'm saying? Things might still get hard to to physically do. But it's less hard on our minds and on our hearts. You know what I'm saying? And it takes less of a toll on us because we know God's got it. And God's in control and he's the one calling the shots and what have you. Today's scripture is coming from Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem saying, thus says the Lord, I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, when you went after me in the wilderness, in the land not sown, Israel was holiness to the Lord, the first fruits of his increase, all that devour him will offend, disaster will come upon them, says the Lord, hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, What injustice have you have your fathers found in me, that they have gone far from me, have followed idols, and have become idolaters? May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. Um, what would cause a person <clears throat> to walk away from God or to ignore the Lord whom they know? I'm talking about somebody, the Lord who they know now. <clears throat> to walk away from God or to ignore the God who they know, who they met, who they had a relationship with, or they know he's there, they know, you know, or, or to rebel against their almighty heavenly father. <clears throat> who will cause a person to do that, to walk away from God? Now, I'm talking about, when I say walk away from God, that means you were there at some point. When I say um, to ignore the Lord whom they know, that means you know he's there. You know who he is. It may not be as personal and intimate as others, but you know him. Or, or when I say to rebel against your almighty heavenly father, that means you know that he is your almighty Heavenly Father, who will cause a person to walk away from God or ignore God or, or rebel against God? There are many, many answers uh, to that question, and that's a lot of questions in one. But I mean, but you can um, answer the whole three-part question with one answer. You know what I'm saying? And, and there are many, many answers to that question. You can consider that one question. There's a lot of answers, but most of, a lot of answers. People, I was going to put the word excuses or reasons, but there are it's just answers for the question. It can be legitimate reasons. It can be excuses. But there are a lot of lot of ways to answer that answer that question. And so, uh, most of those answers can be categorized, I believe, in, in together. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it could be a hundred. It could be hundreds of answers, you know, thousands of answers, you know, but they can be all categorized together. Cause somebody might say, um, because he, um, is it, um, why you do? Because he let my cousin uh, pass in the at car accident or something, you know, they just, you know, that's the, that'd be their reason. So like I said, that could be hundreds and thousands of answers. You know what I'm saying? That could probably be millions of answers or, or excuses or reasons why a person would go in the opposite direction of God. 
but I think they can all be categorized together. Either either they stop believing in God, they either or they stop loving God, or they stop taking pleasure in God and having joy in God. Just those three things. Stop believing him, stop believing in him, stop loving him, or stop having joy and pleasure in him. Um these these things here pretty much sum it all up. If you if you and you see the uh the scripture says <clears throat> the, the the word of the Lord says, Why have your fathers turned away from me? Why have you become idolaters? So the question's still on the table today. Why why have you turned away from God? Why have you become an idolater? Why is your love for uh for why is your love growing towards something or someone else and and and, and dying for God? Why is your love that you have for God dying away and the love that you have for uh other things or other people is getting stronger? Why? Why is that the case? Um and so and so um if you if you I say unbelief, lack of love or lack of joy. If you don't believe, if you don't believe in God, your lifestyle and your behavior align with your unbelief. If there's no, if, if now, as I said, I'm talking about people who did believe or believe it or still believe it or, and just walk away from God or rebel against him or, you know what I'm saying, or ignore him or whatever. And, and it had, to, something had to happen. For them to say, God did this. They they knowing that God is the one who did it. See when they go to, ooh, I see people I love. When they go start talking about the higher power and and your God and and the God the God uh, and, and you know what I'm saying, not not acknowledging that He is God. He is the only God. He is the Lord the Almighty. When they go to saying stuff like that, I don't even look. I look at them like man, they don't even believe. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the ones who do believe, the ones who know the, the Lord God. And they might, and they might, they might have, they might, and, and, and they might experience some type of calamity or disaster that causes them to walk away. And so their unbelief, they they may they may say, "Well, I don't believe God can do anything. I don't believe He's going to do anything. I don't believe He's for me. I don't believe He's He loves me. I don't believe that." Um, and he's going to help me. I don't believe that there's any good in serving the Lord. But see, the whole point is they still acknowledge the Lord. They still believe, but they just don't believe the things that he can do. They don't believe in his power. They don't believe that he's able. You know what I'm saying? They don't believe in as a consequence. They may not believe that there are consequences for their actions. You know, and, and, and so their, 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 their lifestyle and their behavior are going to align it's gonna align. They're gonna. It's gonna align with their unbelief, and their and it comes out. You know, it comes out of them. It shows up physically. What's going on inside them spiritually and mentally, emotionally and psychologically is all gonna show up physically in their physical behavior. Another thing I say to, uh, if you don't love the Lord, you don't aim to please Him. I say your unbelief, your lack of love. What was the third one? Um. No, your lack of joy in the Lord. So your lack of love. If you don't love the Lord, you don't aim to please God and to keep his commands. Jesus said, uh, John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. That was, that's what Jesus says. And uh, that's in the book of John. Oh, excuse me. That's in the book of John. But you go back to the uh, epistles of this in St. John there. <laughs> In, in the one in the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. That's what John that's, that's what John said, Jesus said in John 14. Uh if you go back to the epistles of John, uh, and I think it's first John. I can't give you the chapter. Maybe chapter. Just read the whole first John. Because first John number like five chapters. <laughs> you can get through that, you know what I'm saying, in less than an hour. If you if you got a probably half an hour. Because it's not a lot. You know, so you, you just I mean just not not speed read it. But you can read through it, and if you if your mind goes slipping away, you can back up a few a paragraph or a few sentences and get through it and see what he's saying. But in John, in, 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 and I think I think in John's first epistle, first John, he says, uh, if you if you love God, you're gonna love his children. And he also said, uh, 
He also said that the burdens are not grievous. They're, it's not hard to keep God's commands. It's not. It's not hard to keep God's commands. If you're trying to do it physically, it, it might be hard for you. But in order for you to keep God's commands, it just takes you being in Jesus. And God tell you what to do and what to say and where to go and how to live. That's what God tell you. And then he also tell you when you fall down, he, he tell you, come on, get back up. <laughs> and you're keeping a command. That's it. You're going to fall, but you're keeping a command still. You're going to fail, but you're keeping a command still. You're going to even uh, want to quit. You're going to want to give up. But guess what? You're going to keep going and keeping the, the Lord's commands. You know, now you're not going to be able to keep all 613 laws without breaking any of them. And James says uh, that if you break one, you break them all. If you break one law, you're guilty of them all. And so, and, and so, to love God means to keep his commands. And when a person says, I don't have to keep the commands, I don't want to keep the commands, whatever justification they give for their lifestyle and their behavior, if 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 they love Jesus, they're gonna to strive to 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 uh to do what Jesus says. You know what I'm saying? They uh they they might say they love the Lord and then what their words are 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 in, what their words are implying may not be parallel with what their actions are implying. Their actions imply rebellion against God, disobedience towards God, dishonor for God, disrespect towards God. And I see right now I'm seeing people. I ain't seeing people. Saying, I don't see people I love, but now I'm looking at a certain group of people, man. And we pick on certain people and pick on certain groups, and we point out certain sins. And I say we, and when I say we, I mean we. You know what I'm saying? And then right here when I say we and this, but we also favor some people. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't. I, I'm saying we on that one, but I don't really favor no groups, man. I, I might look at some and say, oh man, that's that's humorous, that's amusing, that's uh man, that's all right there. But the thing about it is, if it's singing. No matter how much I like or love that thing or that person, I'm just not with it. I'm not for it. I'm against it. You know, and that's where I stand. That's why I take a stand. I take a stand where I'm on the Lord's side. And the Lord is not for sin. The Lord is against sin. And, and so if, if we if we intentionally commit sin, if we live in sin, if we love sin, we love living in sin, and we love breaking the commands. We love going against what the Lord said. How can we say we love the Lord? How can you love both things? You can't love God and love sin. You cannot love the Lord Jesus Christ and love sin because your love for one is going to die. You know what I'm saying? The love for Jesus is going to uh, overwhelm your love for sin or your love for sin is going to overwhelm your love for Jesus. But one will grow stronger and one will grow weaker and die out. That's how it works. And so some people's behavior is, is uh, some people walk away from God or rebel against God or stop believing or ignore God or ignore the Lord because of, of um, because they stop, because uh, they don't have love for him. You know what I'm saying? They, they, uh, they, they, they say they do, but they don't. Some stop, some stop walking with the Lord or walk away from the Lord because they stop believing in him, and what he can do. And some stop loving him. The other thing I think on all these reasons for why people do this is, um, <clears throat> is they, they lose joy in the Lord. They lose, they lose joy. Now I was thinking about this one here, man. Um, uh, I think in first Corinthians, I think in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, I'm going to make sure though, I think in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, uh, Paul talks about uh, uh, when you're married, you 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 mind the things of the, wor of, of the world to please your wife more than you mind the things of the Lord. He said, I'd rather everybody be unmarried. When you're unmarried, you spend all your time pleasing God. When you have a wife or a husband, you spend your time pleasing your wife or your husband. That's what Paul says, and, and that's true. Now, this is not a command. 
This is not a command telling you to do it, do such and such for your husband or such and such for your wife. This is just saying that that's how it is. And how is this? And how is this not relevant for the year 2024? If if Paul wrote this stuff 2,000 years ago, and it's still true up to this day, I deal with this every day. I was just thinking about uh, um, my wife went out of town. For a whole week, I'm longer than a week. <laughs> it was a week vacation, but she left the day before and came back the day after. She stayed at her mama house for a couple extra days, gone a whole week and a half, a long time. But when she was gone, but I'm sitting there like, why didn't I do this stuff when I had the house to myself? When I had some time where I didn't have to, you know what I'm saying? Where I can, uh, I didn't have to, uh, I didn't have any other obligations. You know what I'm saying? Family gone, wife and daughter gone, house to myself, and, and I wonder why did not get get on get get on get the Minnesota project. Then why not put a lot of time into a lot of energy into a lot of thought into it? And I'm saying, what was I doing all that whole time? And I remember just eating all thing, eating all eating everything I wanted to eat, and and I said I wasn't playing the game. <laughs> I don't think I had even hooked the game up yet. <laughs> we just moved. I, you know, I'm like, whoa, and I thought about what I was doing. Look, I, I, I uh, did two tile floors, did, did did my office tile floor, the lunch room tile floor, and I did uh, the other the, the bedroom carpet and the and the den carpet. I did I, I did I did four floors in that week, and put blinds up everywhere. And, uh, did half of the yard, you know, putting out asphalt and stuff, and. Did the got everything out the garage and moved. I'm just a lot of things, you know. what I'm saying cause I wanted my wife to be happy. She, I know she ain't like she, the carpet down here. She ain't like coming down here, you know. what I'm saying carpet. For the, the former people had a dog or whatever, and so I even though I had the carpet professional and clean, he still see spots on and stuff. So I just it was easy to go get a carpet. Carpet ain't cost no money. It and it wasn't even hard to put down, you know. what I'm saying it just. It was just took some time to put it down. Uh, and so I just wanted to make the house more comfortable for her down here. You know what I'm saying? The the, the basement is full. It's fully livable. It's, it's, it's finished completely. But And, and, and it looked good, you know. But, you know what I'm saying? If you got a dirty a spot on the carpet, you got a floor with tile missing, and no, you know, it's, it just got to look presentable. And so I, I realized what I was doing. And I'm, I'm giving a long story. And so I was, so I was just, but it's a long story short, I was considering this and saying, the Lord gave me something to do. I'm going to call it the Minnesota Project. The Lord gave me something to do, and I didn't invest any time into it at all for that whole week that I was, uh, just had some free, free time, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't wasting the time playing video games or doing something, you know what I'm saying, uh, that was, that was in vain. I was actually doing some some things for our home, you know, but, but as the Bible says, when you're married, you take care of the things of you, 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 you want to please your wife. You know, don't mean it's a sin. He just, he just not predict. He just foretold that that's how you're going to be, you know? And now here I am like, man, now I'm every day after work, pressing for time, you know, trying to do a little here and a little there with other stuff. But I did have, I was still working, but I just could have spent them, Four hours after work each day doing other stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I was in there working on the house. We just got the house. Hopefully the house will be done soon because I got some stuff to do for the Lord. But what are you spending your time doing? You know what I'm saying? Does that mean it's a sin if you're spending your time uh, pleasing your wife, taking care of your family? Most people have to work. You know what I'm saying? Work. I say this. You got Work takes one third of your day. Sleep takes about a third of your day, and you got another third of your day to do whatever. See, work and sleep. <laughs> you know, it's two thirds of your day combined, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe more. May two thirds of your day go to work and sleep, and you got one third where you get to do whatever else. And so, uh, if you, uh, so if you, if you don't take pleasure in the Lord, if you don't have joy in the Lord, out of that, that one-third of your day that you have left, you're not going to devote it to God. You're not going to devote any of it to God. 
And I say two thirds now. I'm probably pressing some people because for me, work starts at well. I don't be working. I might be driving. I may be getting ready for work and maybe coming back from from the job. It's this. It occupies probably about nine hours of the day. You know what I'm saying? This right here working for a Lord from five thirty in the morning to about seven thirty. I'm working for a Lord. And I think the Lord has told me something, but I ain't going to share that with you until later on, if the Lord will. But um, we got to spend time, we got to be intentional to spend time with the Lord, to listen to the Lord, see what the Lord is saying. Uh, uh, if you don't, if you don't take pleasure in the Lord and you don't have joy in the Lord, then you don't waste your time on the Lord. See what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't talking about me. That's a quote, meaning that's what people think. Waste they they might feel or believe it may not say it, but they might think that they're wasting time when they doing something for the Lord or when they going to God. When it, I had told uh I told one of my former coworkers when I worked at the uh the pattern company, I said, Man, uh I can I can uh I can give you a way to to make a hundred dollars a week extra money. You know what I'm saying? I know a way or, or more, a hundred dollars or more every week. Cause he was talking about he wanted to, he think his girlfriend should maybe work for three years so he can save up ten grand and start start a bid. I said, man, I can give you a way to make a hundred dollars a week, just extra money, and that's about five or six grand a year. It won't take you for two years, and she wouldn't even have to work. You know, it's cause they had kids and stuff. It's a different thing when you when you got a stay at home mom and she have to go to work. That's a whole different thing. Because you got to get daycare and all of us. And I said, he said, how? I said, but you got to have a, uh, you got to have at least a one hour window every, every single day of the week that you devote to scripture time. He said, how you going to get, how I'm going to get the money? I said, you got to first have a one hour window that you devote only to scripture time, to spending or prayer, you know, time for God, time with God. When you, if you got that right there, I can give you the key to the six grand a year. But he never, he never sought to do that. And here, this was the plan right here. And I was doing it myself. It's different now, but it, this was the plan then. So every day, if I got an hour for scripture time for prayer and this and that, when I put the earphones in and read or audio Bible or whatever, here, here was the plan that I had for him. If you got this, if you got, if you have the one hour devoted for God every day, uninterrupted, scripture and prayer time. When you get when you when we leave work, when you get out of work, go over there to CSL Plasma, go up in there and donate blood for that hour while you're reading scripture. That was the plan. I didn't tell him the plan, because then he would have said, I ain't got time to go. See, you ain't got time to go over there. I want you to sit in that chair and donate blood. While you read the scripture for an hour, may take you an hour and twenty minutes, may take an hour and a half that you put in scripture with the Lord or or praying, you know, with your earphones and listen to some good music. I didn't give him the plan because we didn't have the time, the window set aside. And I used to do that. It, it's different now. It might take two hours, three hours. Uh, I don't know how. There's so many people in there. I stopped doing it. I ain't had time for it no more. You know what I'm saying? I'm working full time. I ain't got time to go over there. Stand in line because you can't read while you stand in line. Uh, but listen, that and so and so, uh, you have to if you if you intentionally take pleasure and if you take pleasure in the Lord and you take and you have joy in the Lord, it's not wasting time. You know what I'm saying? It's not, and you can do other things with your time while you're doing it. Um, yeah, you if you if you do audio Bible. You can put stick that you can stick them earphones in, put it in your phone, make sure it's good and juiced up, powered up. Go to uh 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 New King James Audio Bible, dramatized version, where they had a little music playing in the background, and hit uh and, and, and hit shuffle and let the and let and let the Lord pick out what book you listen to. And hit that thing. Man, you can be on that. You can be on a treadmill bike while you are you can be riding your bike while you're doing it. You can be uh on the stair climb or doing the, you know, your exercise thing or whatever you, while your scriptures is going and you making, you, cause you're not, you're not wasting time with the Lord. So you say, I got to exercise. I ain't got time to study the scripture. Well, I tell you what, exercise while you listen to the scripture. 
if you if that's what you feel. I think you always got time for scripture. I think um, bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness profits a lot because it gives promise of things in this life and in the next life. That's the scripture. That's why I said that now. Godliness profits in this life and the next life, but bodily exercise profits a little. Washing your car on Sunday profits a little. <laughs> going to church on Sunday profits a lot because you're going to get in some words. It's going to last. Your, your car going to get dirty again. Your soul going to get, your, your spirit, your mind going to get dirty again. It's better you clean your mind with the word of God instead of cleaning that car. But people might not want to waste their time with him because they don't take pleasure in the Lord. They don't have joy in the Lord. If your joy is in the Lord, your pleasure in the Lord, you make time for God. You make time, you intentionally set aside time, you devote time for God. And when people don't, and don't, when people feel like they're wasting their time in the Lord, guess what? They ignore the commands, they walk away from God eventually, they rebel against God. This is why those other reasons. And there can be a lot of reasons that fall under, you don't have, you don't take pleasure in the Lord. You don't have joy in the Lord, whatever reason. You might have other things to do. You know, today God wants you to do a self-check. Uh, man, it's 719 already. Today, God wants you to do a self-check, a self-evaluation. He knows the answer. God knows the answer to the question, but he wants you to know the answer to the question. Now, the question is, and there's only one question, maybe two questions. I see two or three question marks. But the, qu the main question is, why are you spending so much time, energy, and resources chasing after things other than God. See? Now you see why I brought all this stuff up about my wife being gone and me uh, trying to please her and stuff like that. I don't put my wife before God. I feel like I, well, kind of, I said I was just thinking about that. I had to do the house. I can't sit here and take two months doing the floors in four rooms. I did all of it in three days, two that two. Three days, I think. I did think on one hard, one hard floor. Then I did a hard floor in the carpet. Then I did a carpet. Then I came back and and um, got them stretched out. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, I didn't want to stretch it out over the course of two, three, four months. It's something that could be done in a few days. And and and, but I was thinking, why didn't I do some more things for the Lord? Why was I spending my energy and my time? But I was trying to please my wife, and the scripture says you're going to do that. The scripture says this is what you're going to do when you're married. <laughs> Don't tell you to do it, but we also, but we have, so we have to watch where our love is. You hear me? Don't stop loving your husband. Don't stop loving your wife. Don't stop doing things for your husband. Don't stop doing things for your wife. But don't let your husband or your wife come before God. See there? That's one thing I tell my wife. I say, you know what? I don't, I want to be before everybody else. But I don't want you to put me before Jesus. <laughs> she ain't gonna do neither one. I made her a shirt that say I love. I made my wife a shirt that say I love Jesus, coffee, tacos, my husband, and little bit of words say in that order. <laughs> Jesus, coffee, tacos, and my husband. I made her that shirt. <clears throat> put her name on the back of it too, so when nobody so they know it's hers. <laughs> um, but the thing is, uh. It, it, we shouldn't put anything in anyone before the Lord Jesus Christ. It shouldn't work. You know what I'm saying? Your children, your spouse, nothing should come before the Lord. Because when we put things before the Lord, we end up walking away from the Lord for those things. Or we, or when we put something or something before the Lord, we start to add more things to the plate. And guess what? Before long, we push the Lord away. Or we walked away from the Lord. Or we, we're, ignoring, we're ignoring the Lord. And now I see people I love. And I asked him, I said, why are you ignoring the Lord? I said, I'm not ignoring the Lord. I said, this is what the Lord says right here in the good book. You're ignoring the Lord. Nope, that's not what that means. If it's something that I understand about the word of God, God has to show it to me. As I say, and I'm going to stand on this, a lot of this stuff you can physically do, and a lot of it is spiritual. If, you, if it's something that's not physical, if you can't physically do what the Bible says, you must take it spiritually. You know what I'm saying? I don't start at the spiritual and say everything about the scripture is spiritual because these are these are physical instructions. You can visibly see 
other people doing what the scripture says. And so if you can't physically do it, I encourage you and I advise you to physically do it. But if it seems like something that's not physical, do it spiritually. Don't don't skip the physical because you have you have a spirit a physical body. These people want when Paul say, uh, let me think about something. Where I'm at over here, uh, man. Why isn't my hair and clothes? When Paul say talking about the hair, the long hair and the short hair and the wearing uh, clothing and this and that, then he say, but we don't practice such things. See, all this stuff is in the Bible, man. He say he talking about this stuff, man. He say. What, what to do and what not to do. It's physical things. And so when we make excuses for why we don't do what the Lord says, later on it causes us to walk further and further away from him. We might not turn our backs on the Lord and stop believing in him. We may not give up Jesus completely. But what we do is start to, to ignore his commands or, or you rebel against him and, and say, that's not really what he means. So your heart must be set on making the Lord have pleasing the Lord. Um, so the Lord is asking why are you spending so much time chasing other things and spending so much energy chasing other things and so many resources chasing other things other than God. Doesn't God deserve much more than just a few hours each week of your time? That's what I put on the on the on the scripture. Doesn't God deserve more than much more than a few hours each week of your time? And that's for those who give them a few hours each week. But doesn't God deserve more than a few hours each day of your time? Huh? Each week, each day. I Now I see somebody I love saying, man, each week I don't even give it to them each day. You know, I don't even, I don't give them none each week. You know what I'm saying? Some people might say some. I know somebody said they pray. They pray once a week, pray twice a week or something, you know. I don't know, man. I can't do it. I can't go without God. If I went without God, if I went without the word of God, I'd be back to the old me. I'm telling you, if there was no word of God, I'd be back to the old me. If anybody says something differently, I believe it, I believe that they lying. If there was no word of God, how would you know what's right and wrong? But since you have the word of God, you do know what's right and you do know to do right. To him who knows what's right and doesn't do it for him. That's sin. You know what I'm saying? And God is there much more than just a couple of hours each week of our time. He gives us a full 24 hours to live each day. Surely, surely we can give him glory for all that he has done for us and all that he's doing. Because God has been good and we don't deserve it. And we surely can have earned anything that he's given us. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning, God. I feel like it kind of scratched out, God. I feel like it was kind of mellowed down and, you know, maybe I'll look calm with the Lord. But, God, I, I I pray, God, that your people have received it. I pray that someone else will receive it who watches it later. I pray, God, that it will cause them to, uh, to, to, to reconsider their ways, their behavior, their mind, their way of thinking, their lifestyle, Lord God, their actions and their words, Lord God. I, I pray, God, that this word this morning will call somebody to 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 do a self-check or a self-evaluation, God, and say, why am I spending so much time chasing after other things? I only got 24 hours each day. <laughs> Two-thirds of it go to work and sleep. So, God, help us, Lord. Help us, God, to, to set aside time for you to dedicate and devote time to you, time for you, scripture and prayer, Lord God, meditating, listening to you, talking to you, reading your word, trying to hear what you have to say about everything, God. I pray, God, you would touch the hearts of those who, who want